Hello and welcome to today's session on energy storage. Today we will talk about heat energy storages and we start with sensible heat storages. It might to be a bit strange why we are talking about thermal energy storage when we are talking on renewable electricity generation like for example wind power systems. But at least in the next video sessions, when we talk about the coupling of different energy sectors, it will become more clear. And when we finally will talk about the economics on energy storage, it will become very clear why we also talk about heat storage here in this section. Uh, again, you find all the content in the book that I have written together with my colleague Michael Sterner from OTH Regensburg, Energiespeicher, Bedarf, Technologien, Integration. And especially this part on thermal energy storages I have written together with my colleague Andreas Hauer from ZAE Bayern. The same book at the moment is translated into English and soon will also be appear in an English version. So when we start uh, about energy storage or thermal energy storages, we need to have a bit of an overview on the basic heat transfer mechanisms. And finally, there are three different ones. The first is thermal radiation. That means when there is a body, it is radiating electromagnetic radiation and that is proportional to its temperature to the floor. Else plays a role the emissivity of this body and that is extraordinary, this temperature to the floor that makes it quite dominant compared to the other heat transfer mechanisms. Then we have the heat conductivity, that is the heat conductivity within the material or also within two materials are connected to each other and that is proportional to the temperature difference. And that's the same with the convective heat flow. For example, when air is passing a solid body, then it is uh, proportional to the heat transfer rate and again proportional to the temperature difference of the outside and inside temperature. And then when we have not too big temperature difference between inside and outside, then we can combine all these three mechanisms in the so-called heat transfer coefficient u and make this strongly linear function of the temperature to the four in a small part of temperature difference, small temperature differences in a linear equation that we find in the lowest column. And due to those losses, it is important that we have heat insulation in those sensible energy heat storages. That's also the reason why I wear this heavy coat here in this ugly uh, hot video studio here. Um, what media do we take for the storage of sensible heat? And the most common one is just water. It has so many advantages. So it is almost everywhere available in large quantities. It is of low cost, it's easy to transport, it's environmentally friendly, it's easy to handle. It has enormous high specific heat capacity. There's almost no other material with a higher specific heat capacity. It has a low thermal conductivity. Uh, it's possibly that we have a layering of different temperature levels. It has a relatively low viscosity and very good solvent properties. Sometimes water might not be the best choice. So especially when we want to have a pressure less system and to go above 100 degrees Celsius, then for example, a thermal oil is used or even molten salts, they can reach temperatures of more than 400 degrees Celsius. Which storages could we have with solid storage media? There is on the left side, for example, we have the geothermal probe storage. The storage medium here is soil, rock or water saturated clay rock. And the vertical hole in the ground that can differ somewhat between 20 meters and 150 meters. The drill size is typically 10 to 15 centimeter 
and the heat transfer medium again is water but maybe together with an antifreeze mixture. Storage temperature is typically around 40 to 80 degrees Celsius. Normally no structures are built above those storages that they are better accessible in case of a problem. And then here on the right side we have the geothermal ground collector storage. Here the storage medium is the soil. It is subject to seasonal temperature fluctuations because it's quite close to the surface and the environment, the seasonal uh, temperature um, changes. The length of such a collector is typically less than 100 meter and depth something between 1 and 2 meters. Uh, plastic pipes are used of a diameter of approximately 25 millimeters. The heat transfer medium again is water together with an antifreeze mixture. And also here no structures are built above them. It requires quite costly pit excavation. That is a disadvantage of this horizontal collector. What other medias do we have for solid storage? Quite famous, not so popular anymore is the storage heaters. Here we do not need a heat transfer medium. It converts electricity through heating resistors directly into the heat that then is stored in the storage medium that could be iron oxide stones or magnesite stones. And here we have storage temperatures of up to 650 degrees Celsius. Other possibilities are directly to use uh, building components, the building mass, so-called thermally active building components like we see in the picture in the example of a wall or we use the foundation storage that we see here on the picture just here on the right below. For liquid storage media, which stores do we have? That could be concrete, steel or plastic containers. In general, the storage medium is simultaneously the heat transfer medium. Direct and indirect charging and discharging concepts are available, so with or without heat exchangers, and every storage size is realizable. The variants are also at the same time to store heat. They are also used to store cold between 0 and 20 degrees Celsius. Also salts, oils and sodium at high temperatures are used in those tanks and also caverns are used to store a high amount of heat energy. Further we have hot water storage uh, in earth baffins. The storage medium again is water. It has a very low cost and we can realize here very high storage capacities that even seasonal storage becomes possible. And on the right side we have the aquifer storages. So the storage medium again is of course water because it's the water conducting levels below ground. The utilization of natural groundwater flow is used. It can be realized as a long-term storage and the possibility of heat and cold storage for the seasonal change, for example, with heating and cooling of buildings. And to end this, we have a short video that explains again the sensible heat storage process. Hi, today we are talking about sensible heat energy storage. For that I am here with my small friend Fermi, a thermos flask. Sensible heat energy storages are a type of thermal energy storages. When their energy content changes, one notices a change temperature level. What does that mean to Fermi? Let's have a closer look on him. From outside and also inside, one can see a stainless steel or aluminium wall. An insulation consisting of a vacuum layer is in between and the reservoir itself, the storage container. What happens when we charge Fermi with hot water? Therefore, we heat water with a heat source, the charging energy. General advantage of using water as a storage medium is that it has an enormous high specific heat capacity. That means that it can, in comparison to other storage media, store more energy with the same difference in temperature. Water is environmentally friendly, widely available of low cost, and there is a lot of experience with the handling of water. 
Basically, all media try to reach the thermodynamical equilibrium. That means that all media try to end up with the same temperature. Therefore, a good insulation is of great importance. The red arrow means a big heat loss, the blue arrow a smaller one. Additionally, all sensible thermal heat storage should have a small fill phase. The bigger the relation between surface and volume, the bigger is the heat loss or the self-discharge. Therefore, most thermal storages have cylindric form, as the form of a ball is not that practical. Liquid storages and also solid storages exist. For example, a solid body is heated up via a liquid heat transfer fluid. Again, a good insulation and a small surface is of importance. And then the next video will continue explaining the leveled thermal energy storage.